Just because things from the Dollar Tree only cost $1 doesn't mean you can't DIY some incredibly high-end looking decor, and that's exactly what we're doing today in this video. Hi, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing some Dollar Tree DIYs based on one of my current favorite home decor stores, which is McGee & Co. I just get so much inspiration from their website and I know you will love these DIYs just as much. Now these aren't going to be exact dupes of products that are on their website. I'm going to be using what I see there as inspiration to make some affordable Dollar Tree DIYs. This video is also part of a very exciting collab, which I will talk about a little bit later on, but let's talk about the first inspiration piece that I'm going to be creating. I think one of my favorite home decor items or trends right now is using different decorative trays or boxes, and Dollar Tree has some perfect items to make your own. So let's get into this DIY. Starting with one of these Dollar Tree gift boxes, I do believe this is the medium size. They do have a larger and smaller version, and we're not going to be using the lid. I'm only using the bottom box, and I'm painting the entire inside with matte black acrylic paint. So I thought it'd be fun to do a popsicle stick project. I just love how versatile these are. I grabbed two packs, but I only needed one. And what I did was mark both ends of the popsicle sticks at two inches roughly. I didn't care if it was absolutely perfect. And I did that to 25 or maybe it was like 26 popsicle sticks. Then I'm going in with my favorite new tool, which are these miter shears, and I'm cutting all of the popsicles down to size at that two inch mark on both ends. Then since I had all of those middle pieces left, I decided let's use those in the bottom of the box. So I cut down a bunch more little pieces that were the same length as the middle pieces between the two ends that we cut off. Now for the sides of these boxes, I wanted to keep that cute scalloped detail that the popsicle sticks would create. So I just started hot gluing them down along the perimeter of the box like so, making sure that the little scalloped edge was over top of the sides of the boxes, as you see me doing right here. Now this box is perfect in size to where on the longer sides you can completely fill in if you put the popsicle sticks right up next to each other down an entire side. But then on the two ends I found it's easier if you work your way from the outside to the inside because you'll end up with a small gap here and that's just where I put in another popsicle stick slightly overlapping it like this and that just covers up that gap. Now there's a bunch of different methods that you could use for the inside of the tray and I decided to go a herringbone method with these popsicle stick pieces. So as you see here, I'm just forming that herringbone and hot gluing the popsicle stick pieces into place. I started roughly in the middle. I didn't measure and maybe I should have, but I honestly didn't care very much because there was no way that this was going to be perfect when you're hand cutting down popsicle stick pieces. And I didn't even care either as I layered in all these popsicle sticks that they were perfectly aligned or anything like that. Now for all the edge pieces where a full popsicle stick piece won't fit, I switched my miter shears to 45 degrees. And this will allow me to get perfect cuts along the edges of the bottom of the tray so that this is nice and completely filled in. This is such a perfect method and I just love how this turned out. stain color this time. I'm using Minwax's Ebony because I thought doing a black tray would just look so much more high-end and classy and a little bit modern and I love the idea of using a wood stain because it's going to soak into the wood grain so you will get a little variation that you wouldn't get if you were using paint. And since the popsicle sticks are super absorbent, I pretty much immediately started wiping off the stain as soon as I applied it onto the popsicle sticks because I really didn't want to risk losing out on some of the natural wood grain shining through the stain. Now I let the stain dry completely overnight before moving on to this next step, which was giving the entire tray, including the sides that are part of the original box, a quick coat of satin polyurethane, and this is just the craft store kind that you can buy in the small acrylic paint sized bottles. And I love this because it just really brings out the color and makes this look more finished. 
As the final detail, I wanted to add some handles to these trays using this Dollar Tree faux leather ribbon that they had a while back. I cut two strips down to the size that I wanted and then hot glued them onto the sides of the box using the popsicle sticks as a guide to make sure that this was centered. Then one of my favorite hacks is using some simple brads that you can get from the scrapbook section at the craft store, cutting off the little tabs that are on the backs of them, and then just gluing down the nail head portion of the brad to create a faux nail head look on your DIY project. And I think this tray turned out completely expensive looking, but only cost me a couple of bucks. part of an exciting collab with a whole bunch of other DIY YouTubers. I was so honored when David Owen Creates invited me to be part of this because I knew it would be such a fun challenge. We are all either making dupes or taking inspiration from high-end stores and making our own Dollar Tree DIYs with them. So if you love this video or this type of DIY, definitely head to the description box, click that playlist link, and check out all of the other creators. And if you're coming from one of their channels, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. Now the next item or trend that I'm kind of taking on for this DIY are those very structural looking side tables that I am just seeing everywhere on Instagram, online, not just at McGee & Co, but all sorts of different stores. I wanted to do something a little bit different and make a really cool modern plant stand. So let's hop in to this project. To make this really cool structural piece, I'm starting with two Dollar Tree party bowls as well as this pack of little plastic saucers. I flipped one of the bowls upside down and then taking the saucers, I actually took two of them and glued them together and then repeated that again so I'd have a set of two plates glued together and then glued both of those pieces together like so to create one little piece. I thought this would just make a really nice structural element in between the two party bowls and just add something a little different than just two bowls glued together. Now the key to adhering the texture that we're gonna be putting on these bowls is by using some drywall tape. And now this is kind of expensive. It's about $8 for a roll, but you do get a ton of it. And I just used some scissors to cut off small pieces and also sort of manipulate the tape so that it would lay nicely along these bowls and the two middle plates. And I did this all the way around the entire surface. This is just a way easier method to add something that the texture can grip onto without having to sand or risk anything chipping or falling off. Of course, this only works if you're gonna be applying a textural coat and not paint. If you choose to go the paint method, I recommend using a fine grit sandpaper. Once I had all of the outsides of the bowls covered, as well as the inside of the top bowl, because that part will be exposed when I'm turning this into kind of like a little plant stand situation, I'm going in with some joint compound or drywall mud, and that's because I just have a ton left from when I did some artwork for my patio makeover that I'm just completely trying to use up in whatever way that I can. And I thought this would be the perfect method to achieve this look. You could also use plaster to do this as well. And I just used a plastic putty knife to apply it all around the entire surface, putting on a nice thin even coat for the first coat. And then I let that first coat completely dry for 24 hours before going back in and applying a second coat. And with the second coat of the joint compound, this is really where I was trying to bring in the texture that I was going for, using that putty knife to just achieve a really nice, smooth, yet kind of variated look. After another 24 hours had gone by, I went in with some fine grit sandpaper just to sand everything down, get it all nice and smooth and prepped for the next step, which is painting the piece. The options are endless when it's time to paint. I decided to just go with White Gallery by Valspar. That's what I used for my board and batten wall DIY, and I had a lot of it, so I figured it'd be perfect for this project. And I wanted to keep this simple, minimal, and modern looking, so I thought a white or off-white tone was perfect for this project. 
but I think this would be cool in a black or a terracotta color or whatever color matches your decor or personal style. things to look at on the McGee Co. website is their artwork. I always find so much inspiration there. And if you saw my dining room makeover, then you know that I've been figuring out what my decor style is, which is transitional style, kind of like the art you see over my shoulder. And I wanted to recreate my own painting and my own piece. So I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a really simple abstract landscape. Next up, I wanted to do a Dollar Tree project a little different than I normally do using one of these small canvases and I wanted to create some artwork. I feel like I usually don't do any sort of art on my channel. It's more DIY and crafts and I find art to be incredibly relaxing and therapeutic. So I wanted to do a very simple landscape. I kind of just made up the landscape that I chose, sketched it in with pencil, and then I went in with some paint and just filling in the main colors for the background, the midground, and the foreground. So as you see here, I just have a very simple landscape with a sky, a small little mountain in the background, and some green grass and a path in the front. Once I blocked in all of the colors that I wanted for this piece, I then started going in with some different shades within the color families that I was working with to add some variations. So here's kind of like a steely blue along with a teal. And I kind of went with a dabbing method at first when applying in this paint because I thought maybe that was the look I wanted to go with. But ultimately I decided to go with more of a linear brush stroke kind of look and went with some longer strokes to kind of blend and fill in the sky but still leaving a lot of variation between the different paint tones to create this look because i wanted this to look like a very nice transitional art piece i repeated that same thing when going over the grass adding in some brush strokes to kind of mimic the look of long strands of grass in a field and bringing in multiple different colors and shades until i was completely satisfied with the look what I love about doing artwork like this is one, it's super affordable because you made it. It's so much fun and relaxing and it just allows you to experiment and try new things and not really care if it turns out perfectly, especially if you're using a Dollar Tree canvas or canvas panel. And if it's not perfect, it's perfectly fine because this is just an abstract landscape type piece. And I think my favorite part of this painting was making the clouds. That was just a lot of fun to play around with the different colors, adding in some darker shades and the blues kind of at the bottom of the clouds. And I brought in a warmer cream tone for the tops of the clouds and some more of that white in the middle to just bring some life into them. I just, I don't know. That was just very fun for me to paint this portion. Once my painting had completely dried, I decided it looked a little too bright and colorful. So I went in with this tan colored acrylic paint and a lot of water, and I just gave it two coats of this paint in a wash. This really just brings in a little bit of a vintagey look and feeling to the painting, dulls out some of the colors a little bit, and brings in some much needed warmth that I felt like this painting needed. And also to kind of up that vintage style transitional look that I was going for, I also decided to give the painting a final coat of a light whitewash and I let it all completely dry before moving on. I wanted to mount this painting in a Dollar Tree frame. I really loved this frame here. So I took out the backing and I traced it out onto a piece of my favorite canvas duck cloth material. I absolutely love this fabric. I keep it in my stash at all times because it is so versatile. And I just took that piece, hot glued it down to the backing of the frame, and then hot glued my little art piece in the center of the frame and put the backing and the art into the frame. And that completes this really simple yet beautiful transitional art piece. Now don't forget to head to the description box and check out the playlist. That is where you will find all of the amazing creators taking part in this fun challenge. I'll also link that right here on an end screen and that's everything I have for you today in this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.